Switchblade is an action puzzle platformer launched for 8-bit and 16-bit computers. Recently, however, Pico Interactive bought the rights to the game and developed a physical port for the Sega Genesis, which is how I'm playing this. The game was created by Simon Phipps, the same developer behind the Rick Dangerous titles, which, although they've been largely forgotten today, the Rick Dangerous games were some of my favorite MS-DOS platformers back in the day. And it's my understanding he even designed the cover art for this title. Speaking of which... The game comes in a Sega Genesis style box and I gotta say, I really like this cover. I think this is the first time I can say I genuinely like a Pico Interactive cover without any caveats. The colors reflect that of the game, the poses are dynamic and I really dig the enemy design as well as that of your character. And that makes sense too, because like previously said, Simon Phipps designed the cover himself. This is definitely a big upgrade over the original cover design used for the 8-bit and 16-bit computer originals. On the back of the box we get some basic descriptions of the game and a few screenshots. Unlike other recent Pico releases, this game only has one cover, so there's no alternate cover to choose from. I would have liked to have seen the original cover as an alternate option. But that's okay, because I feel they really got it right with this one. Inside, we find the cartridge and the full color manual. I genuinely like this manual, but I was a little sad to see it wasn't as concept art rich as previous Pico releases. If I had to guess, I'd wager there wasn't much concept art from the original game at all. In fact, all of the item and enemy designs here seem to be scans from rough sketches done on paper. Likely, this was all the original concept art created back in 1989. The manual does end with another of these sketches, as well as the original game cover, which is a pretty nice nod. With that said, while reading it through, I did find the occasional spelling mistake. Nothing too egregious, but if you look, they're definitely there. The cartridge is par for the course with past Pico releases. The plastic has a nice, smooth quality and it feels well built. It's not completely similar to official Sega Mega Drive cartridges though, as the sticker placement is a bit longer than original carts. In my past reviews, I've had people asking me to open the cartridges and check what's inside. So... Uh, here we are, I guess. I have no idea what I'm looking at, so maybe someone in the comments section can leave us with some insights regarding the cartridge itself. Overall, this is a pretty nice packaging, with a good quality cover, case, cartridge... I don't really like how the manual has a few spelling mistakes, but it's not a deal breaker or anything. Booting up the game, you get a small introduction detailing the story before you're finally off to save the world. I will say, it's kind of neat how the art style was basically a western artist from the 90s trying to reproduce anime aesthetics from the 80s. So you get this odd but unique mismatch of styles which wasn't all that common back in the day. I mean, sure, they became kinda common back in the late 90s and early 2000s, but for the late 80s and early 90s, this was pretty uncommon. The only other example I can think of was likely Turrican. Anyway, you control Hero on his quest to infiltrate an enemy base, collect the pieces of a magical fire sword and kill the big bad guy. To do this, you'll mostly fight, jump and collect power-ups. But instead of being a fast-paced action platformer, Switchblade is all about taking your time and assessing the situation, much like Rick Dangerous 2, which also happens to be my favorite in the Rick Dangerous games. You might also notice that Switchblade isn't winning any awards for best Sega Genesis graphics. But this is something I can't really blame this port for. As previously mentioned, the game was originally created for the Atari ST, which in of itself is a much weaker system graphically than the Mega Drive. Additionally, it was also developed with the ZX Spectrum, Amstrad CPC and Commodore 64 ports in mind. 
So it's understandable that's something that had to run on this. likely isn't pushing any new grounds when running on the Mega Drive. Now, up to this point, the most graphically impressive version of Switchblade was the Amiga port, or possibly the Atari Jaguar version, which was recently launched by Pico. Interestingly enough, it seems this Sega Genesis port is actually the most graphically impressive, as it's the only one to feature parallax scrolling at the beginning of the game, as well as helicopters in the background, none of which can be found on the Amiga or Jaguar ports. There's also a few other minor graphical improvements here and there, but for the most part, once you enter the enemy facility, something which happens within the first few minutes of the game, the Amiga, Jaguar and Sega Genesis ports will all look virtually the same. Yes, with the exception of the first few screens, where you're outside, the entire game will look like this. Basically, warehouses, grey walls, grey columns, wooden boxes, that sort of thing. Additionally, you might notice that there's no scrolling in this game. Essentially, because Switchblade was created for the Atari ST and that system had no scrolling, this game is entirely comprised of a series of interconnected screens. Anyway, the idea of the game is to explore each series of rooms to pick up power-ups and search for the 16 pieces of the Fire Sword, which are required to defeat the final boss. Combat is fairly easy, but extremely awkward. Basically, you need to hold the attack button, and the more you charge your attack bar, the more powerful your attack. So far, nothing out of the ordinary. But when you don't have a weapon equipped, each third of the bar will result in a different melee attack. So a weak attack results in a punch, a medium attack in a kick, and a strong attack in a downward kick. Each of these has a different attack range, and sometimes the situation might call for a kick and you end up performing one of the other two, while other times you're taking damage because the only way to hit your foes is with a downward kick. But that requires you to completely charge your bar, which can take some time. This is made even worse by the fact you're not given a grace period when you're hit. So in some cases, you can keep getting hit over and over again, with no chance to recover, jump away or fight back. You'll also be picking up several ranged weapons, which have different damage outputs and some of them can even damage multiple enemies at once. Each weapon has limited ammo, but you can't change between them or even go back to melee whenever you want. Meaning, if you pick up a gun, you'll be using it until the ammo runs out, even if you wanted to save it for later. You'll also find power-ups which can permanently increase your damage bar or charge it faster. Conversely, you might sometimes run into power-downs which have the reverse effect. Additionally, if you lose a life, you'll lose your current weapon as well as all your power-ups. What makes the game fun though isn't the combat per se, but rather the exploration and analyzing how to best approach each room. In a sense, this is an evolution of the Jet Set Willy or Fantastic Dizzy formula, where you have an objective, a large set of rooms to explore, and you need to traverse through the various hazards that populate it. Except here, you can actually defend yourself and you have a health bar. It really is fun to explore the enemy base, knocking down walls to reveal secret rooms, and collecting plenty of items that do nothing more than merely increasing your high score. This is a Euro platformer after all. Sure, you'll also find health replenishing items, the aforementioned power-ups and even a few letters for extra lives or bonus points. But the real fun of the game is in the exploration. And in that sense, Switchblade for the Sega Genesis is really well made. Although there are no official levels in the game, each series of rooms is capped off with a stronger enemy that is the closest thing you'll find to a boss. 
To be clear, on some areas, you can actually bump into the room with the boss almost immediately, but you can run away and come back once you're better equipped or fight him right there. Even if you do defeat him, you can simply choose to go back and explore the rest of the area for extra points or sword pieces. The game is pretty free-flowing in that regard. But, with that said, you might run into a situation where a new area locks you out of the previous one, so you should explore all past rooms before progressing further. Despite this, the game is relatively short. I wasn't able to complete it, but it took me about an hour to get halfway through. With that said, there are no passwords or save points, so if you die, you'll be starting over from the beginning. Another thing to point out is that there are only 3 songs in the entire game. Now, granted, they're good songs, but when you're actually playing the game, you're always listening to the same song on loop, and it can get old after a while. Now, when I originally started playing Switchblade, my copy would randomly boot me to the credit sequence. I reported this to Pico and the programmer told me this meant the game crashed, as when the game encounters an error, it's programmed to jump to the thank you screen, a little tidbit he picked up from GameHut. But the issue was that my game kept crashing every time I played it. It'd be doing fine, but after about an hour or so, it would crash and I'd lose my entire progress. There were other minor bugs too, like blocks or enemies randomly disappearing and sometimes enemies would spawn in odd locations. Thankfully, Pico sent me a patched cartridge and after using this new version, I can confirm the game never crashed on me again. Objection! Ok, so this was the part where I was going to say the new version did not have any crashes. And that's what I thought, I recorded all the footage for this video, I didn't find any crashes, and then just as I was about to edit the final, make the final editing pass on the video, the game crashed. And I went back to it, I started playing it again, and the game crashed again, and again, and again. So basically I had four crashes in the span of an hour. And it's not like the new cartridge didn't have any bugs either, I did find some serious bugs as well. Like at one point the room didn't load, and at another point the information of the room loaded completely wrong. So I'm doing this part completely unscripted, and it's basically a last minute addendum to the video. But basically what I mean is, the game is broken. Just, this game is, it's broken. I, I can't recommend it like this. I want to like it, I mean, I like Switchblade, I, I enjoy the game, but I can't recommend a broken product. I know that Pico Interactive has its fair share of detractors, um, some people don't like the, the, the high prices, the quality of the cartridges, some people have even studied that the cartridges can damage your console, which I'm not a, a techie guy, so I have no idea if it's true or not, but enough people who understand about the issue have come forward about this. On my end, I never liked how the games, uh, how the manuals have typos, how the cartridge itself has a typo on the mold. I never really liked the covers either, but these were minor issues. But having a broken product, one that is expensive, like I bought the game. The game cost me $40, plus shipping from the United States to Portugal, and that's not that's not a cheap shipping. It's it's expensive. So this brings out a lot of questions or a lot of doubts I have with Pico. You see, all of their games up to this point, uh, they were basically already ROMs that existed online, and they bought the rights and then you know put it on a cartridge. But this was a new game. They took an Amiga game. They hired an outside developer and then had that developer port the game to the Mega Drive. But the issue is, I don't feel this game was tested, or at least was tested enough. I've worked in the game industry for 3 years, give or take, and I know that testing a game is really difficult, because you have to intentionally break the game, you have to push the game to its limits. And I didn't do that while playing Switchblade, I was just playing it normally, but I kept running into issues 
with both versions of the cartridge. And the worst part is, it casts a doubt on whether or not I should buy future Pico products, because if they're going to port Switchblade 2 or Rick Dangerous or anything else, how do I know this won't have the same porting issues? And the issue is, I want to support them. I want to see some Amiga RPG games on the Mega Drive. I want to see the Eshar Trilogy, for example. But... Would I support them like this? I want to support them. I try to be positive in my videos, but... The game is broken. This game is broken, and I can't recommend it. I was going to give it a positive video, it was going to be a cautious recommendation, but I can't anymore. It's... it's broken. I'm sorry. So, no. I guess that's it.